Look, we're friends, right? The mouse is slowing you down. It's messing you up. It's taking far too long to do the simple tasks that you need to do in VS Code. That is what we're gonna to change today. We're gonna to learn some keyboard shortcuts. We are also gonna learn how to use the terminal. A few other surprises along the way. First thing we need to do is to make sure that our fingers know where the command and control keys are. Now I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna be working a lot with the command key. That's the Windows key on Windows. So you probably won't be using that a lot in VS Code. However, you will be using the control key a lot, same with Alt. So we need to make sure that our fingers know where things are. So that's what we're gonna start doing. We're gonna start with some simple exercises. Probably the most important one is Command Shift P or Control Shift P on Windows. This opens up the command palette. And so what you could do is you can go through here and you can see on the right side there that keyboard commands are shown if they are present. So maybe we wanna know how to open up a terminal. How do we do that? Well, we can put open terminal in here and you can see I can do shift command C and that's gonna open an external terminal, which is neat. And here's another fun one. I can do terminal just like this, editor, and you can see create new terminal in editor area. That's one of my favorites. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. All right, it's time for exercise number two. Let's shift focus between the editor tab here and then also the side drawer. So to go to the side drawer, I hit command zero and now I'm in the side drawer. If I wanna find a particular file, I can just start typing its name and you can see it's selected. If I wanna go back to the editor, command one, command zero, command one. And for added spice, we could do command B. That is going to close the side drawer. Command B, command zero, command one. So once you start doing this, your fingers are going to start reaching for these commands instead of reaching for the mouse. That's what we want. All right, let's take another jump here. This is so exciting. We're leaving the mouse behind. I'm very, very happy about that. Let's open up the settings using command comma and we'll search for something that everyone asks whenever I do a screencast. What font are you using? I'm using in Consolata for Powerline. So to get here, I hit command comma and started typing font. Here's another fun one. If you do command KT, this brings up the themes. And so the purpose of doing this is so that your fingers can find the command key or the control key quickly. So Burke was telling me I should probably use hot dog stand for this video, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna change to something blue, like GitHub blue. I'm gonna leave it just like this. All right, how do we get out of here? Here's another fun one, Command W. You can think about that as Command Window, Command W, close the current window. If I close this, we're done. We're out of here. You know, in the old days when I was trying to find a particular document, I might go and like hunt and peck through here. Where is it, where is it, where is it? It took me forever for some reason to realize I can just hit Command P and go look it up. So I might want to find, let's say that user.js file, enter. There I am. That's neat, Command P. I think a lot of people know Command P. That is for getting around, but did you know about Command T? This searches symbols all throughout the project. What's the symbol you're asking? Well, we probably recognize these things from IntelliSense, right? These are methods. You can also have properties, you can have comments. What I'm looking for specifically is the register method. And that takes me right to it. Isn't that fun? I can, I can cut that entire line by doing Command X if I want, Command Z to bring it back. Let's do that again, it was so much fun. Command X, Command Z. We know these things already probably. Command C and Command V, those are the paste. But what we don't know, what we don't know is how could we select this entire block? How do we select this entire code block? All right, I can tell you that right now. First thing is if you hold down Shift, Command, right arrow, you can select the whole line. And instead of right arrow, this is end, uh, can control shift end on windows. If I want to select the whole thing, I go shift control right arrow. That selects the entire block. What can I do with this? Well, I can do a lot. I can do a lot of damage. If I hold down the option key or the alt key with an up arrow, I can move this thing around. Ooh, lots of fun and very disorienting, but I can do that. That is a great way to move a single line of code. So if I want to go option up arrow, you can see I'm moving this around. Okay, well that is probably not terribly useful in code, but what if I wanted to go open up index.js, ejs, excuse me, index.ejs, and here we are, we're trying to go and find a specific include. And there's an include right there. But do I have other includes on this page? Well, I don't know. I could, if I wanted to, scroll up and down and look and look, or you know what's even faster? Hit Command F for find, and then just type in include and it highlights every single one of them. I hit enter, 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 enter. I have an include at the bottom. You can see the one that's highlighted. I could just do that and then alt down arrow. 
Now I'm moving it inside of main where it should be. These are the ways that we get much faster moving through code. The trick is, of course, muscle memory. You have to think the thing, and then your fingers have to do it. So like right now, if I told you to type the word the, you just type in, in the air. Pretend you're on a keyboard. Type the word the. Your fingers would go T-H-E. Boom. And that's what you need to be thinking when you're trying to find something in your code. Like, I want to find that auth routine. What do I do? How about command T? Auth. Boom. Authenticate. There it is. I'm on it. I'm on it. And now I'm going to go like that and that. And I've selected the whole thing. And I want to comment it out. I can comment it out with command forward slash. Well, you know what? I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to hit command Z to undo it. Actually, I did want to do it. Shift command Z to do it again. Or wait, no, I didn't want to do it. Command Z to undo it. These are the exercises that will build the muscle memory. Just keep going, keep playing, have a good time. I also remember that there is a sync method in here somewhere and that syncs my database. And yeah, there it is. It syncs my database uh, automatically. It forces it to be synced. I don't like that at all. So what do I do? What do I do? Think about this. Muscle memory time. Well, for me, I'm going to highlight this entire line, but oh, wait a minute. I have some space at the front. I don't like that. If I just hit command back arrow, it's going to put the cursor right at the front of the line. And there we go. This is what I want. Moving my fingers over again. And I have now got the entire block selected. Shift, control, right arrow. And then command forward slash to comment it out. That's it. And by the way, shout out to the Vim users out there. Uh, I know you're probably sitting there going, oh, just use the Vim extensions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, or you've been curious about Vim and you want to see a video about that, Leave me a comment below. And while you're leaving a comment, would you please like and subscribe if you like this video? Because it really helps us. It really helps us. We read every comment. We see your likes. And it really helps us know what videos to keep making. Keyboard shortcuts are just the beginning of your speed journey. The other thing is working the terminal. Terminal is your friend. Opening up a shell session and having a good time doing it. So for that, let's... Uh, Create new terminal in editor area. One of my favorite. You can see I have remapped control back tick to open up the terminal in the editor. Now, previously, if you opened up the terminal, let's just do that. You would get terminal ports, comments, problems, output, debug console, and so on. This one's a little bit harder to work with. I have mine down below, but some people keep it to the right, and it can be very, very difficult to read. Not only that, you only get one. But what if you wanted more terminal sessions? Well, I can keep going all the way along here and opening up different terminal sessions that I can close with command W. All right, control back to opens up a terminal session right in the editor. I love that. I'm working with bash here. You know, if you're on WSL on windows, you're going to have the same thing. Uh, if you're on PowerShell, the commands are going to be a little bit different, but it's really worth knowing. For instance, what if I want to create a new file? I could do it in two ways. Actually, I can do it a few ways. Here's a fun little tip. Did you know if you come over here and double click in an empty area, It'll create a file for you. You can also come up here and you can click new file and then there you go. Or you could be a command line weirdo and do touch change log, for instance, and this will create a file right in your current workspace, which is pretty neat. Now I have a change log. That's exciting. I don't want the change log, so I'm just going to type in rm change log and remove it real fast. Touch rm. I want to make a few directories in here. I might do make dear dash p one, two, and three. And doing dash P gives me all three directories. Two, three, one is right there. That's neat. I really don't want those. I'm going to do rm dash r, one, two, and three. And then it's going to delete those three directories. Gonzo, goodbye. Now, if you're on Windows, uh, this is actually done using commas. So you can do make dear and then one, comma, two, comma, three. And then it'll do the same thing. And you do rm, same thing, one, comma, two, comma, three, and you're good to go getting a little bit loud in here, don't you think? By command K, it clears out everything, refreshes the terminal window, which I really like. Let's talk about a couple other things and then we'll call it a day, shall we? Let's talk about aliases. You can do an alias in bash, just typing the word alias. And what that does is it pops an alias or like a small shortcut into the terminal session. This only stays for the session. If I close this terminal, it'll be gone. Uh, you can do this on Windows in PowerShell using new alias, dash name, dash value. One of the things I like to do is I like to have things as short as I possibly can. So one of my favorite aliases is just L. And this is going to equal ls dash la. That's list everything in a directory. So I do that. 
Now you can see all of this stuff over here, and you can now see it over here, but it's much quicker just to hit L. Again, getting kind of loud. Command K to clear that out. Another fun alias is if you just do T. You can do alias T, and that would, could be something like npm run test. And if I do T, it'll run all the tests in my test suite. Aliases are a lot of fun, and you can put them into a shell script that you can then load when you feel like working with them in your session. So for instance, what I could do is I could do something like touch dot alias. So now I have a dot alias file right here, and this can get committed to source control if I want. And here I can do alias and then L equals LS dash LA. I like that. Now I can do shift command D and just copy this line down because I want to have another one in here that says alias T equals NPM run test. Neato. So if I close this window using command W, what I can do to load this now is I can do source and then dot alias. And that will load in all of my aliases. It won't look like I have a typo there. Close enough though, you get the idea. All right, so let's do command K to get back out of there. I'm going to get rid of that file. Or I'm done. Alien. Very good. All right, time for the last tip of the day. I'm going to open up a make file. I'm going to hit command P, open up the make file in my project, and it's open. The old dinosaur. The good old standard make. We love it. What does make do? It's simply a build tool. It was made for compiling programs. But I like to abuse it to do all kinds of things. Here you can see my very first command is web also called a target. And what it's going to do is it's going to run npm run start for me. I have test down here, CSS build sense makes sense. I thought that was funny because it opens up the open command will open up the website that I'll be working with. Uh, make logs will open up the logs. These are just utility commands and I can run them simply by opening up a new session and typing in make. This will start up my application. As you can see, I've got debug on and if I want to turn it off, I can just do that. Jumping back into the make file using shift command left brace, you can see that I have a few others in here, make test, a make CSS, and so on. Now, why is this neat? Make is fun because you can orchestrate these commands in a bunch of different ways. Here I'm using it as sort of a bunch of aliases, but if I was to put build right here, and then maybe sense after that one, what this is gonna do is it's gonna run sense, then build, and then the CSS command. So it basically orchestrates your commands all together. Make is a ton of fun. I use it in every project and it just makes life a little bit easier for me. Well, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope your efficiency and productivity gets a boost. And as we always say here, happy coding.